Welcome to Korea. How do you feel? Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here in Korea uh, as Seoul is the heart of crypto and Web3 throughout Asia and for the world as well. Very excited community. It's very happy, very energized. It's been very fun. I enjoy yourself. And the Blue Media had introduced this tax as a Bitcoin layer to solution part of them. Could you briefly introduce Bitcoin layer two and the tax? Sure. So when it comes to Bitcoin layers, mm. uh, when we look at Bitcoin versus Ethereum, in the world of Ethereum, Ethereum development, the introduction of layers came to be with the main chain is the L1, mm -hmm. to then some needs for scaling solutions mm -hmm. that developed L2s mm -hmm. as we know it, or layer twos, and then additional layers like L3s, mm -hmm. which can be considered subnets and mm -hmm. some other definitions as well, mm -hmm. that allowed us to create this layered technical stack mm -hmm. for to build on a platform to mm -hmm. an application. Mm -hmm. And in Bitcoin, we have a similar mm -hmm. structure. Originally, we just had the Bitcoin L1, mm -hmm. layer one, mm -hmm. and then layer Later, pardon me, in 2017, 2019, we saw the beginnings mm -hmm. of scaling solutions mm -hmm. that would bring programmability, would bring use cases mm -hmm. and improved speed mm -hmm. to the Bitcoin core. And then later, the ability to mm -hmm. build applications mm -hmm. on and leveraging Bitcoin's network. Mm -hmm. And so today, here in 2024, over the last year and a half, mm -hmm. We have seen the introductions of Bitcoin layers, which take the L1 mm -hmm. to then the L2. Mm -hmm. So solutions like Stacks or Lightning or Rootstock, Liquid, mm -hmm. some of the originals to then the introductions mm -hmm. of many others, whether it be Arch, Merlin, Babylon, mm -hmm. Bob, and several other new chains mm -hmm. that have come to introduce new scaling and new consensus mechanisms mm -hmm. to allow performance and scalability on and around the Bitcoin ecosystem. Okay, thank you. And, and Nakamoto upgrade, you know? Uh, yes, that's very familiar. <laughs> the upgrade was initially scheduled for early this year, uh, but it has been delayed from there, you know, some time. And, and the upgrade process itself is taking a significant amount of time, one more time, what is the reason for this and it is your progress in web? Yeah, so happy to talk about it. And maybe so for some further context, Stacks was the first Bitcoin layer to mm. bring programmability to our contracts. Yeah, yeah, very early. And we went mainnet in mm. 2021. Uh, okay. So a few years ago. Uh, and with that, part of its initial structure uh, was to pair Stacks blocks with Bitcoin blocks, uh, which allows Stacks to always read uh -huh. what's happening on the Bitcoin network. Uh -huh. So it's one of the only layers to be able to do that uh -huh. as well. Fast forward, there were a lot of lessons learned in that for massive transactions, high frequency trading uh -huh. and other use cases that uh -huh. we needed better speed and performance. Uh -huh. So that led to the introduction uh -huh. of Nakamoto, uh -huh. the largest upgrade to come to the network since the mainnet launch in 2023. Mm -hmm. And Nakamoto began, mm -hmm. to your point, mm -hmm. in the spring, around April, mm -hmm. right around the Bitcoin mm -hmm. fourth halving, mm -hmm. we kicked off the first mm -hmm. of a few phases mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. installation. Mm -hmm. So Nakamoto began its activation back in April with opening up the initial tests and trials mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the uh, introduction and bringing to uh, market a signer network, faster block times. Mm -hmm. So instead of 10 plus minutes, uh, block time, 10 minutes. they now come down mm -hmm. to five seconds. Uh, five and it seconds. also opens up the ability for Rust and uh -huh. Wasm programmability. Uh -huh. So a whole new world for developers to build uh -huh. on. And lastly, SBTC, uh -huh. the decentralized bridged uh -huh. asset allowing users to bring Bitcoin from the L1 to the L2 and later in the application mm -hmm. layer. So that began in April. Mm -hmm. And fast forward today, mm -hmm. only a week ago, mm -hmm. at the end of August, phase two of that was complete mm -hmm. and kicked off. Mm -hmm. So that begins the instantiation or the install mm -hmm. of that upgrade. Mm -hmm. 
And that happens between cycle 92 and cycle 93. Mm -hmm. So we are now in the process of cycle 92. Mm -hmm. And as that handoff happens mm -hmm. in the coming weeks, we will shift and do the hard fork and introduce the full new signers network. Mm -hmm. We will introduce as well the latest and greatest around speed mm -hmm. coming down mm -hmm. into that five second mm -hmm. mark. And then later, shortly thereafter, we'll introduce uh, SVTC mm -hmm. as well. And so... Uh, to the question of, of time uh, as well. Any major upgrade uh, always takes time and you want to make sure that it's tested, mm -hmm. it's hardened and secure mm -hmm. in the process. And that's what the developers around the very decentralized community that mm -hmm. Stacks is. During the phase one, saw that they wanted to put in more effort and time mm -hmm. around a few pieces of the upgrade, mm -hmm. which extended the timeline mm -hmm. uh, to where we are today. Mm -hmm. As with Bitcoin, we have one shot to really get security okay. correct. And, and that's what uh, the developers did. Okay, okay, okay. Various DeFi activities are being carried out uh, on Ethereum and the other mainnet. They are sometimes called the Ethereum killers. What unique feature can be the point layer two? Yeah, so with a, it had seven years worth of development, mm -hmm. activity, and opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So 2017 until recently, mm -hmm. there was a lot of development, a okay. lot of users, and a lot of DeFi mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. So with Bitcoin, we were able to use that as a foundation mm -hmm. of how to build what DeFi is exciting, what may new DeFi mm -hmm. be very exciting, and what might not be mm -hmm. going forward. And so when we look at the two, yes, there are many new networks being introduced mm -hmm. as Bitcoin layers. Mm -hmm. Some are EVM compatible, oh, Ethereum EVM, compatible. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and so yeah. they will work together to bridge mm -hmm. Ethereum into Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of effort around Solana mm -hmm. and the Move ecosystem, Aptos and Sui, mm -hmm. to also bridge mm -hmm. back to, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, lots of talk. Oh. And so what's unique oh. is that Bitcoin oh. and Bitcoin layers, one, have the largest market cap today oh, right. over a trillion dollars oh, okay. that currently oh, okay. is not yet moved oh, okay. it's very mm -hmm. dormant mm -hmm. so now anyone building on bitcoin mm -hmm. a layer or otherwise has access to over a trillion dollars of capital mm -hmm. ready to start moving mm -hmm. whether it's DeFi around lending yielding mm -hmm. or other opportunities including real world uh, assets, yeah, yeah. there's so I much. Yeah. yeah, and then wallets, uh -huh. today there are 40 million wallets mm -hmm. that hold more than $1 mm -hmm. of Bitcoin. So you have 40 million users ready mm -hmm. to go. Wow. And when we look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin, right now, Ethereum's market cap and TVL ratio, mm -hmm. there's about 12 to 15 percent of Ethereum's market cap mm. that is currently in applications, mm. like DeFi, stables, mm. etc. With Bitcoin today, mm. about 17, 18 different layers included. Mm. There's only a quarter percent. Mm. When we share that ratio, mm. there's over $180 billion mm. today mm. in opportunity mm. for DeFi, for stables, for smart contracts and applications. Mm. So when we think about by uh, network to network or protocol to protocol, mm. protocol killers, it's very opposite. It's mm. actually bridging mm. all of these worlds mm. together, mm. coming back to its core roots, which wow. is Bitcoin, wow. and being able to unlock that store of value and that dormant capital that has sat there mm. to do something much greater. Okay. The utility of Bitcoin. Oh, Babylon Labs announced the first page of the Bitcoin staking Main yes. yeah, do you know? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. This allows users to deposit points through self-managed staking. What distinguishes this and what impact do you think it will have on the overall Bitcoin layer too? Great question. Mm. I think for the entire Bitcoin ecosystem, mm. it's hugely impactful. Mm. And that's because when we look historically, mm. when it came to the idea of Bitcoin staking mm. in any capacity, mm. Stacks brought that first. Uh -huh. With Stacks, you were able to stack mm -hmm. instead of stake, mm -hmm. stack your STX token and yield back uh -huh. BTC mm -hmm. Bitcoin. 
That was version one. Uh -huh. Then it, here in 2024, uh -huh. we saw the introduction of liquid stacking uh -huh. with a few different companies where you could no longer have to be locked up for say two week cycles. Uh -huh. Instead, you could move your assets in and out uh -huh. and yield Bitcoin or other assets. Uh -huh. The third era uh -huh. is this exciting era that Babylon, Lombard, and a few others are opening up, and that is restaking, which is bringing other networks uh, together to leverage Babylon's uh, protocol to do restaking around Bitcoin. This is really exciting. But then they are going to drive us into the next era. And this next era is going to drive native Bitcoin staking and then native liquid Bitcoin staking. So no longer would you have to maybe move your Bitcoin to another layer, but instead mm. you do it right from the L1. Mm. So there's a lot of effort, mm. but what Babylon has launched uh -huh. in just over uh, just a week ago uh -huh. entered us into that next third era. Uh -huh. And the entire Bitcoin ecosystem is looking to mm. this as the next base of, okay, how do we think about staking? How do we think about yields? How do we think about earning off of the Bitcoin uh -huh. that again has sat dormant for so long? Uh -huh. and so it's very impactful and the entire ecosystem is excited uh -huh. about what it has brought uh -huh. furthermore. Uh -huh. um, the, very, very expensive. Yeah, uh -huh. very. So internet is uh, information network and the Bitcoin is uh, the value of network. Fidelity say that. And on, on Bitcoin network, how to stacks can play? Yeah. So one of the exciting things that we saw here in 2024, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year, was the introduction of the Bitcoin ETFs. Mm -hmm. right? We saw over now a dozen ETFs that are publicly tradable mm -hmm. across the world with more on the way mm -hmm. that allowed for institutional capital mm -hmm. and their investors mm -hmm. the opportunity to come to participate in the Bitcoin ecosystem uh -huh. and in crypto in general. Uh -huh. That has made a huge impact on the industry overall because Fidelity, Vanek, Franklin Templeton, and many others, uh -huh. uh, BlackRock, et cetera, that are participating in these ETFs or leading them have seen the value of not just the asset, but the core network uh -huh. as well. They have also done a job of marketing uh -huh. and educating so many users around the world as to what the possibility are mm. around the assets like bitcoin and others and its net we also have saw grayscale mm. launch several alternative asset mm. etps or products mm. as well they launched one around mm. stacks near and mm. other assets mm. so for stacks our role in this mm. is we are a great network mm. for institutional capital to participate, to build, mm. and also mm. to invest. Again, Grayscale launched mm. an ETP around this, uh, which is publicly available out there, mm. uh, as well as a few others. And so Stacks, we bring the hardened security mm. and stability mm. into the Bitcoin layers. Mm. And uh, when you look at it from an asset perspective, whether it be uh, Fidelity, as you mentioned, mm. or many others, will yield back BTC. Mm. Uh, some in the Bitcoin community, Bitmetry, they argue that the issuance of stacks coin threatens Bitcoin's reward system. How do you think? Yeah, so I've tried my best to I really kind of reset the bar around that conversation. Because when we talk about those that are considered Bitcoin maxis, mm -hmm. a lot of time there's a negative mm -hmm. tone to it. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to instead show appreciation mm -hmm. so to those that helped really make Bitcoin as a network what it is today. If those who weren't loud, proud, and very supportive, mm -hmm. they didn't exist, mm -hmm. Bitcoin as an asset and as a network might not be what it is today. Mm -hmm. And so those that were considered Bitcoin maxis, we have to give appreciation to all that they did to make sure that the network stayed mm -hmm. stable mm -hmm. and secure for more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. We've also need to give credit to those that have started to see opportunity mm -hmm. around making it a progressive mm -hmm. net, but being very conscious mm -hmm. of how and when upgrades come as well. And then those that are allowing for more innovation mm -hmm. to happen on top. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's many within the Bitcoin and Web3 industry overall that have opinions mm -hmm. on what should and what shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And I think we all just looking at these different networks mm -hmm. need to take our time, mm -hmm. make sure that the mechanisms, the tokenomics, etc., are there mm -hmm. to for the best 
mm-hmm. for security and stability mm-hmm. and for the future of mm-hmm. So for those that are saying that, I think it's a very valid thought on their process because again, they help to create mm-hmm. the core network mm-hmm. and stable and secure. But when it comes to stacks or many other uh, networks and mm-hmm. layers to exist today, there are some pieces that we do need to have in place and a token and others are a part of that process as well. They already talk of, talk that the uh, specs registered and issued this coin or just security with the SEC. Yes. And, uh, could you explain the reason behind the decision? Why? Yeah, so uh, I'll give you kind of my view of it mm-hmm. as I, I was lucky enough to join mm-hmm. uh, the ecosystem shortly after. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things in that 2017 to 2019 mm-hmm. era, we saw a lot of ICOs, mm-hmm. a lot of initial coin mm-hmm. offerings, a lot mm-hmm. of token listings, mm-hmm. and a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. And so the SACS ecosystem took this different route to make sure that if and when in the future, mm-hmm. regulation might apply differently or however it may shape out, or if things were looked at as a security, mm-hmm. that they could have made the best steps mm-hmm. forward sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, in mm-hmm. 2019, uh, Stacks as an ecosystem was one of the first and one of the only today that went through the filing process with the SEC uh, to make sure that it was a qualified token offering and that everything was done by uh, the book at that time and hopefully for the future as well. Uh, and so that worked out. Uh, and so uh, part of that process also led to the decentralization of the ecosystem so that upon mainnet, the ecosystem fully decentralized, many different entities were existing to help support and contribute versus just one as well. And uh, yeah, we just saw a notice from the SEC, which is publicly out there on their answer. And they found that Stacks had done everything right and by the books and that uh, STX as a token, it's not considered a security. Uh, And that was part of their ruling at the time, uh, having gone through that process. So when I look at many different projects, Back in 2019, I think that was a very good process to go through uh, because the regulation was not clear. Mm. And as it's still coming together today, mm. it's now something to be pointed to mm. as well. Mm. Uh, there are many people in Korea who love stacks. Yes. <laughs> Please advise for them for Korean investor. So very appreciative of the entire stacks community mm. here in Korea mm. and Seoul in particular. Uh, it is our largest market and very fortunate every time we do come mm-hmm. here to talk to those locally as to what has them excited, why they continue to be so supportive of Stacks. And every time it's a heartwarming conversation mm-hmm. and a welcoming as well. And so a big thank you to the entire Korea mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. for Stacks and Web3 for all that they do and all that you do at home uh, as well. And I, Happy to answer any questions as it comes mm. as to what's coming next with Stacks and Nakamoto. I'm just very appreciative mm. of all the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.